Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Matador Seg 28. We featured a couple of bags from the Matador Seg series on the channel in the past, the 40 liter version and the 30 liter. And I really enjoyed using those bags. They brought something really unique to the table in my opinion. I feel like they're maybe a little bit underrated, but there were some issues with those versions of the bag, which I think that Matador has addressed very well with the updated versions of their bag. And when the 28 liter was announced, it just caught my eye immediately as it seemed to really offer everything that I look for out of a minimal travel bag. And so I had high expectations going into this one. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's been like to use this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, Let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, to me, Matador's bags tend to have a more functional and outdoorsy vibe. There's a lot of straps, attachment points, pockets, so it's not the most minimal appearance. I wouldn't necessarily take it into an office setting with a nicer outfit, but overall, I really like how their bags tend to look. The Seg series is also a little more unique just because of the organizational layout that it has, so, so there's some additional pocketing. Uh, and with the updated version, Matador has also added the sort of grid pattern at the bottom, which I think looks nice. And in general, it's still a versatile enough look that I think it's gonna work well in an urban setting for exploring a city or going to the gym and also for traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels really solidly built. The exterior fabric is a recycled 420D nylon that feels like it's gonna hold up well to the rigors of travel while also providing a nice amount of weather resistance and helping to keep the weight of the bag down. Beyond that, you have Hypalon kind of all throughout the bag for the attachment points, for some of the labels, and then you have really great aqua guarded YKK zippers as well. Continuing along the outside of the bag, you have compression straps on both sides. These are gonna be great for just kind of tightening everything down or slimming the bag down when it's not quite as full. These may also be good for holding additional accessories on the outside of the bag that don't fit on the inside, something like a jacket or a tripod. I really like the system that's implemented here. They have these loops that allow you to very easily tighten everything down and get a good grip there. So even though you can't fully release the buckles, I think this still makes it very easy to take advantage of the straps. And then on one side of the bag, you also have an external water bottle pocket. This is an update from the Seg 30 that I had been using previously. Implementation there was a little different. So I like that this is just kind of a more traditional water bottle pocket, very easy to get my bottle when I need it. It was able to hold my 20 ounce water bottle comfortably, nice amount of flexibility in this material. Probably be able to hold something a little bit bigger. It just may start to kind of dig into the items that are in the main compartment. And then because of the elastic material here, when it's not in use, it still stays pretty close to the bag to maintain a more streamlined appearance. And then at the top, you have a couple of handles one kind of closer to the straps and then one on the front. This was similar to the previous versions of the Seg backpack. So these are great for just kind of loading the bag into a trunk or into an overhead storage compartment. You also have a handle on the side for when you don't want to wear the bag on your shoulders and you have one at the bottom. So there's really a lot of different ways to just kind of load this up and grab it when you need to. The handles have nice kind of seat belt like fabric, very durable. And then moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 28 liters. I had previously used the Seg 30. I don't feel a huge difference between those two liters, which is great, as I really like the versatility of that size. With this one, I still feel like I can hold everything that I would need for my day to day, even longer days where I'm taking extra stuff to go to the gym or if I have additional kind of bulky equipment. And then it's gonna be a great minimal travel bag size. I used the Seg 30 many times as a personal item on a flight, I placed it under the seat. I feel like this one will work the same because when it's fully packed out, it still doesn't feel overwhelmingly big, especially with the flexible nature of the bag. And it feels like it's also just gonna be a great silhouette for navigating crowded areas and jumping onto public transit or going on a hike. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. This is one of the biggest improvements over the Seg 30. That bag wasn't uncomfortable per se, but the harness system on that just really didn't have a ton of padding or support. So very different here. The straps offer a really nice, robust padding. It's comfortable right out of the box. On the inside, they have kind of breathable fabric here. It's not maybe as breathable as something like traditional air mesh per se, but it still has done a good job with helping to prevent moisture from building up. 
The straps also have a nice width to prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. I also really like the shape here at the top, just kind of curves around the shoulders nicely, so it's felt great while wearing it. On the straps, you also have a couple of attachment points, some webbing where you clip on maybe uh, something with a carabiner or a light, and then you also have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. As far as the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. You have the same type of padding and fabric that we saw on the straps, so just a big improvement over the Seg 30 here as well. It really has felt great while wearing this for a longer period of time. When it's fully loaded out, you can feel the comfort provided by this padding. There's more support in general. The fabric and these slight air channels help with breathability, although I do wish that there had been something a little bit deeper here to provide more ventilation while walking around. Down at the bottom, you also have a couple of loops that pair with an included waist belt that you can fully remove if you don't want to use it. It's just a pretty simple strap. I'm not generally a fan of these as I don't feel that they help too much, but I'm glad that it's included. Glad that it's fully removable in case you don't want to use it. And then another nice addition to the back panel is that you have a luggage pass through that's going to allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. One final note before moving on from the back panel is that you have a little hidden zipper compartment here where the luggage pass through is that's gonna be a great spot to hide something a little bit more sensitive like some extra cash or wallet or maybe a passport. Jumping into the organizational options, this is really where this series shines for me. The layout here is very unique in that it has this sort of built-in packing cube system. So it's something that can take a little bit of getting used to. It's probably not gonna be for everybody necessarily, but if it suits your packing style, or if you just prefer to have a lot of flexibility in how you can organize your bag, there is a lot to like here. I've really enjoyed using this in the trips that I've used the Seg Series 4. And so jumping in, I do like some of the additional improvements besides these pockets that have been made with the Seg 28. The first of which is that there is a much improved laptop compartment. So you have the ability to access it via the back near the harness system. You have a dedicated laptop area. This should be able to hold a 13 or 14 inch laptop pretty comfortably. Similar to the Globe Rider backpack that I looked at from Matador a while back, this is a fairly narrow opening. So if you have a 15 inch laptop, I don't think it's gonna fit there. Even if you can squeeze it in, I wouldn't personally use it. So 13, 14 inches, or maybe a tablet is what I would go with here. But for, that's typically what I use anyway. So it works for me. I like that it's a dedicated compartment, so easy to grab it, and it is properly suspended from the bottom of the ground. So I think this area in general is much better than the previous edition. Currently I have a 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see that it's pretty close to the top. It's a fairly snug fit. And so pulling the device out, now the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No sort of fleece lining or anything like that, but with the amount of padding that's provided here and the fact that it's pulled up off the bottom of the ground, it does feel like my device is gonna be pretty safe while I'm on the go. Another area that's been improved from the previous edition is this top quick access pocket, which is always really important, particularly while I'm traveling. And so in addition to having the very well protected zipper, you have a nice amount of space, high contrast lining on the inside. And at the moment, I'm using this to hold just some of the random items that I'm carrying with me. This would typically be where I might have my sunglasses and where I would toss in items while going th through TSA. Because of how many pockets I have to kind of mess around with here, I have those in other areas. So here I just have a field notes notebook. I have my laptop charger. You can see there's a good amount of space. It goes fairly deep. And then you have this zippered pocket in this area as well that has this sort of a uh, nice, elastic material, it feels really durable. Here I have a charging cable for my phone, I have my Apple Magic Mouse, and on the back you have a couple of rows of kind of elastic webbing, so it might be good for cables or other sort of tools that you're carrying while you're on the go. I have a pocket knife here, not good for traveling, but just to kind of showcase that it fits there. And then you also have a little lanyard with a clip. It's gonna be a good spot for your keys, flashlight, or some type of multi-tool. And then moving into the rest of the bag, the layout here is interesting because you have the ability to use this as kind of a standard duffel bag. So you can open it up fully and take advantage of just the empty space. And you can see that each section of the bag is actually labeled with the leaders uh, to just kind of help you know what type of space is provided. So that would be segment zero, 28 liters. I'll show you that in a second. And then you have 
the same labeling for each of the other compartments. So, you know, again, pretty interesting how you can kind of mess around with this layout to suit your packing style. The way that I have this loaded at the moment is almost a mix of EDC and minimal travel. So I wanted to showcase how much it could hold. So I actually have my packing set up and then the items that I might have with me just on a day to day as well. And one of the things I forgot to call out first off about all the zippers that you have this interesting system here where you can kind of thread them through this loop and then provides a little bit of theft deterrence, makes it a little harder to get the uh, zipper pull out. You could also kind of attach uh, a lock onto these little loops. They are just fabric, so you know they wouldn't be necessarily protected from a knife or something sharp, but still any deterrence I always think is a good thing. And so I'll start off with the main duffel style compartment. It has a zipper that goes all the way around. You have these really nice aqua guarded zippers. Matador, of course, always paying attention to the details. You'll see the zipper pull for this main area is different from the other compartments so that it makes it easy to see which one you need to grab. And so this opens pretty much like a suitcase. And here's where you can start to see the unique nature of this bag. So you have all these kind of built-in packing cubes. Here's the segments that are separated out. And then you have the main area. And so this is meant to be flexible so that if you wanna use some of this space, for you know, these items, these will kind of just shift up to allow you to mold everything around what you're storing. And so, as mentioned, I have this main area packed out for travel. And so I have even some extra items here because of the flexible nature. These 28 liters can really hold a ton of stuff. So I have at the top my Beat Studio wireless headphones with their hard shell case. I have my Air Dot kit. I have an extra pair of shoes, which I typically have with me. And then I have my Peak Design Packing Cube setup. So I have the small compressible Peak Design Cube as well as the medium. Both of those fit in there easily. And then you can get a better sense of the inside here. Nice, again, high contrast lining, lots of visibility. And then here you have the segments. I like that you have the little handles here to help you open everything up. And then in theory, you wouldn't necessarily even need to use this space if you just want to pack everything into the segments. But if you have bulkier shoes or dirty items, or like me, if you just wanna have kind of your packing area and then your EDC areas, you can do that very easily. And so starting off with the top segment, I pretty much use this as a secondary quick access pocket. So I don't even take full advantage of the four liters of space that are provided here. This is where I have my sunglasses with their bulkier case, as well as a portable battery and my GoPro. I like that it has a little bit of extra space in case I wanna separate my liquids out. This is where I would place it to make it easy to get out while going through TSA. Would also just have leftover space for me to place my belt, my phone, my watch, anything that I'm taking off while going through security. And then below that, you have a six liter segment, which I'm using to hold some of the bulkier EDC tech items that I would have. So my DJI Mavic Mini with its case, really just wanted to kind of showcase how much capacity is offered. And then I have uh, this hub that I carry with me that allows me to charge my laptop, my tablet, and a bunch of devices from one cable. So a really nice section. And you can start to see how these would also just work as packing cubes if you wanted to use this to separate your socks and underwear, your shirts. And then as you go down, you can use them for specific types of clothes. Down below that, you have an eight liter section, which is you know bigger, easily holds my Air Pro Tech kit. And if not, another great spot, maybe for some pants, some shorts. So keeping your stuff separated. I've also used this by outfits. So I have a, an outfit for each day packed into a particular section. And at the bottom, you have the largest section, 10 liters. When I'm using these as kind of packing cubes, this is where I would place uh, something like my shoes to keep them separated out, something a little bit bulkier. If I'm carrying a towel, a larger jacket. At the moment, I'm using this for my packable rain jacket and an additional EDC pouch, the Alpaca Admin pouch, just because I can since all my packing stuff fit into the other compartment. But at 10 liters, you can see more than enough space for anything that you might wanna store. This would also be maybe where I would actually place some of my jeans 
or larger kind of pant items. So as I've mentioned countless times throughout the video, there's just a lot of flexibility here. You can organize it in a lot of different ways. It's been really fun for me to experiment with different layouts depending on whether I'm using these bags for a trip, for EDC, for the gym. They really just kind of adapt to whatever you need them to adapt to. And you know, they're particularly useful if you're somebody who's kind of curious about modular organization and you don't want to necessarily buy packing cubes. If you do want to buy packing cubes, Matador has you covered there. I've actually been excited to test out some of these new uh, gear cubes, they call them. So these are an interesting alternative to packing cubes. They work like packing cubes in the sense that they provide a pouch that you can use to store either you know tech items, EDC gear, or your clothing and travel items. They have a couple of different sizes. And so you can separate your stuff out with, you know, if you want your shirts and socks and underwear and some of them. And then these have, you know, the same weather resistant materials that Matador uses in their other bags. And they almost remind me like little mini duffel bags. You can open them up, they are top loading, and then they also have the ability to compress down. So you can really tighten everything, save space or prevent it from shifting around. But that's secondary, you know, you can pair that with a bag like this in that main area, or you can use the built-in packing cubes. So, you know, really just a lot of great accessories in their ecosystem that are gonna keep you organized, keep all of your stuff easy to find and protect while you're on the go. And if you're interested in a flexible travel bag that can work for your day-to-day, -day, that can be used as a gym bag, that's gonna offer a lot of weather resistance, this is gonna be a really interesting option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Matador Seg 28 over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site for around $250, which is definitely a bit of an investment. It is more premium pricing, but it is a very solidly built bag. It's got a really nice and unique feature set, and it's also gonna compare well to some of the other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag that this made me think of is the Air Travel Pack 3 Small, which is another one of my favorite minimal travel bags. I've used that on a lot of trips. It's one of my favorite personal item bags that can still hold an impressive amount also worked well for EDC. It's got a really sleek, modern, techie style. Air always has very high quality bags, comfortable harness systems. I really like the organizational layouts that they offer, great laptop protection, clamshell style opening. So, you know, really just checking off all those boxes. And if you're interested in a bag that's gonna have a modern aesthetic, that's durable, that has a little bit more of a classic kind of travel bag layout, and that's gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Patagonia Mini MLC, which is one that has really surprised me as I've used it over the past year or so. Super versatile, it comes in at 30 liters, so it can hold an impressive amount, but it can still work as a carry-on and personal item on many flights. It's got a pretty simple layout, clamshell style opening with just a big compartment to store all of your stuff, some light organization throughout to be able to access your essentials, water bottle pocket, got a pretty comfortable harness system. That one's unique in that you have the ability to hide the straps away and use it as a shoulder bag. So that's, you know, it just gives it a little bit of added uh, flexibility, but just a really simple style, very useful. And if you're a fan of Patagonia's bags, you're just looking for something simple and versatile, then that's gonna be an excellent option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Evergood CTB26, which I've talked about a lot on the channel. It's quickly become one of my favorite all-purpose bags of all time. I really like the subdued aesthetic that Evergoods typically has in their bags. It's got one of the best organizational layouts of any bag that I've used. Dual external water bottle pockets, dedicated laptop sleeve, clamshell style opening at 26 liters. It can hold an impressive amount. It's, you know, it's gonna be able to work for minimal travel, but it's not overwhelmingly so for your day-to-day, -day. so a pretty similar capacity to this. And you know, if you're looking for something with that type of a kind of minimal style that's gonna work well in a variety of environments, that's gonna have a nice organizational layout, it's gonna be really rugged, and that's gonna be one of the best options that you can currently get. With that being said, the Matador Seg 28 holds up really well against all those options. And if you're looking for a spacious, flexible, kind of all-purpose bag that's gonna offer a lot of weather resistance, a lot of functionality, and one of the most unique layouts that's currently available, this is gonna be an excellent option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Matador Seg 28 and how it compares to some of the other minimal travel bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank Matador for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.